In Saloum, Senegal created in 2003 the protected marine zone of Bamboon, which raised the awareness of fishermen and local populations of the need to protect a threatened environment. To manage the reproduction zones of marine species, fishing was forbidden and the shell mounds closely watched. Before we had this watchtower, it was difficult because we couldn't see well. Now we can see a long way and we've been able to catch 13 poachers. Gorgi Bas is the oldest of the Bamboong Echo Guards. There are two of us to watch this zone, and we have no weapons. It's just a length of wood, it's not a weapon, but from a way off it scares the poachers. When Gorgi suspects a canoe of poaching, he warns the intervention team. I need you, Captain. What's happening? There's a canoe in the Belong. It looks like poachers. What are they up to? Throwing out a net. OK, we'll be there in 15 minutes. Good day, I'm Captain Kante, the Bamboong Ranger. You're going to give me the same old excuse? No, this time it's because the current is too strong. It pushed us off course. I'm begging you to believe us. Pull up the nets and follow us. We're going to the watchtower to file the charges. The fishermen will have to pay a fine and the fish will be confiscated. Senegal is the third largest consumer of fish in the world. Fishing is the livelihood of a third of the population. If the resources of the mangrove swamps run out, the whole country will pay the price. The objective of creating protected maritime zones is to allow time for species to reproduce and to conserve biodiversity. We make two catches a day for scientific research, which gives us an idea of the number of fish in the protected marine zone of Bamboong and the diversity of species present. Captain Lamine Kanti is the ranger for this protected site. Bring along the case, mullet, sambium as well. That's a mollusk, sambium. It gets weighed and counted. We'll put the fishing catch around the canoe. For some years, we've seen quite a significant increase in the number of species. The number of species has risen from 35 to over 70. As well as that, we're seeing new species such as Barracuda, Tiofs, which are commonly known as white grouper and which were vanishing from Senegalese waters. Now we're seeing the species returning here. Here we have a baby ray, which comes from this adult ray, and that proves that the protected zone is a reproduction zone for rays and other species. Other protected marine zones have been set up in Senegal. Careful, even suspicious at first, fishing communities and villages are now helping in the preservation of the mangrove swamps. Sponges are returning, which is a sign of the good health of the ecosystem. For some time, the mangroves have been shelter to unexpected visitors. I've been here since 2002. Beforehand, the warthogs were scared of us, but now they're starting to get used to us and look for food. Driven out of the back country by the destruction of their natural habitat and urbanization, 
a growing number of large mammals come to hide in the leafy and protective maze of the mangrove swamps. Green monkeys have left the savanna and now spend most of their time in the mangroves, where they feed on leaves, birds' eggs and fiddler crabs. Baboons, driven from the fields by furious villagers after the destruction of harvests, have followed the same path. The Sine Saloum colony now has over 600 individuals. They've developed the habit of sleeping at the top of the mangroves, which isn't at all their natural environment, but is a real shelter from predators while they sleep. Yes, they're there. They're really beautiful. There are two of them, two of them. In fact, there are ten altogether, and they're here because the mangrove ecosystem protects them. They leave their refuge during the day to come and feed. Often they hunt or sometimes eat dead fish on the beach, and then they eat what they find. The pack leader is actually a female. Well, we had difficulty identifying them because they have highly developed genital organs. They've got a clitoris larger than a penis, so it's hard to tell the numbers of males and females. But the female is always larger. And what's extraordinary is that they even give birth by the clitoris. They don't have a vagina. They manage to have a maximum of four babies in their lifetime, and so they have trouble reproducing, with as well the problem that their territory, their habitat, is under threat, and here they can survive because of the mangroves. Fragilized by the harsh droughts of the past and major demographic growth, it has become vital to protect one of the only refuge ecosystems from deforestation. For 10 years, Aida El Ali has been aiming to reforest the mangroves. 15 years ago, everything here was as dead as Masasum. But men and women fought tooth and nail to make this possible. And now nature lives again. So I say that with the environment we have to stop theorizing, because nature needs us to act for her. That's what she needs, action. In 2006, we began with one village, then 15, then 153, then 326, and after that, 428 villages. 110,000 people were mobilized to plant 52 million mangrove seedlings, over 15,600 hectares, more than 30,000 football fields. Every year, we continue, but we stop counting. To this day, 30 million young mangroves have been planted. In zones like Masasum, where the salt has got into the mud, the regrowth is weaker. But elsewhere, it's a real success. Thanks to reforestation, the birds that live on the coastal strip are back, herons, Turns, egrets, weaver birds, kingfishers, once more perch upon the mangroves. <laughs> <laughs>